All right. Uh, my name is Chris. Um, I uh, um, am one of the organizers of WordCamp Dayton. I use WordCamp in, or I use WordCamp. I use WordPress uh, in uh, in my business life on behalf of my clients. I run my uh, content marketing, web design, video production business on a WordPress site, and have been using WordPress for about ten years. Uh, none of that, however, uh, makes me uh, an expert. Um, I would imagine, I don't know all of you in the room, but I would imagine that you are more expert in your fields than I am. Uh, so uh, if you have questions, uh, if you want to expand upon something I say, uh, if you want to dispute something that I say, uh, then please, please jump in uh, over the next half hour or so. But before we get started, uh, I'd like for some of you just to, to tell us what you do. Um, if you are not a developer or a designer, what kind of businesses are you in, anybody? Okay. Okay. So you're providing legal law information to lawyers? Okay. Okay. You are a publisher. You're not in the legal business, you are a publisher. Anybody else? Jackie. Financial literacy. Financial literacy and education. Who's the target audience? Anyone that's not financially literate. Okay. okay. You know, um, mainly um, younger people, people that need to learn more about their finances and how to use And one of the ways you communicate that information is on a website? Yeah, that's five years old, but I've been talking for it, so this okay. is the way it's Okay, excellent, excellent. Jackie is a publisher. She's not, she came here and the first thing she told us is she's in a financial literacy organization. I say no, first and foremost, you're a publisher or a communicator to get that information to people. Anybody else who's not a, sir? Call center market. Call center market, what kinds of things do you call people in market? So we take uh, uh, calls for uh, mystery clients. Okay. 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 How do people know to call your call center? Through the website. You are a publisher. Look at this. Look at this. You all came here thinking that you were in some niche businesses, right? Anybody else? Clean rooms, like for scientific instruments, or yeah. Okay. Okay. And the target, and the target audience for that that service or uh, the actual. You do the construction or the design? Both. Um, a lot of my clients are B2B in pharma or in aerospace engineering. Uh, um, they have very demanding requirements for tolerances and cleanliness. They want information. So while the people I work for make all of this very sophisticated equipment, when I talk with them, I say, you guys aren't designing machine tools and pharmaceutical diagnostic systems. You're publishing. You got to share that information in a way the engineers can consume, so that they spec your equipment. Yes. Um, you're a blogger. You definitely are a publisher. Yeah. And you use WordPress already? Okay. We're going to talk a little bit about how WordPress is still true to its roots as a blogging platform. Where it started. Um, uh, much more robust than, than that. But some of the things I'm going to talk about really go to the foundation of WordPress as a blogging tool. Anybody else want to share what their business is? Mm -hmm. Okay. Define old vehicles. 
Okay. So those are basically one, two, four, and eight horsepower vehicles then? Is that true? That's really bad dad humor. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, I, I come from the traditional publishing world, newspapers and, and older media. Uh, and so when people discover that, they go, oh, you, you know about publishing. And after I started having to answer those kinds of comments a couple times, it dawned on me that, yeah, I came from the publishing world, but that what all of us do every day, or need to be doing, is publishing and sharing our information. Because it doesn't matter how good we are at selling old vehicles, or static-free clean rooms, uh, or providing financial literacy information, that what we're, uh, we're going to have more success and the people we're trying to serve are going to be much happier and they're probably going to come back and pay us more if we meet their needs, we help them solve their problems by sharing what we know. So I start from, well, it looks like I'm not going to start at all, am I? I start from the premise that there are ways to use WordPress that move us from all of the other discussions that you've heard so far at WordCamp, which is about how to set up a WordPress site, how to add functionality through plug plugins, how to uh, uh, modify or create custom code to do things that don't exist yet, to this is applied. WordPress. How are we going to run our businesses? How are we going to make money? And importantly, how are we going to do it in a way that's easy? WordPress is supposed to be easy, and on many levels it isn't, but there are so many other levels in which it really is easy. And here's why this is important. Um, most people, and remember, I'm, I start out as a writer and editor, and every time I hear myself saying what I'm about to say, I can't believe that a word guy is saying this. People respond online and in print to what they see, not what they read. I can write a 3,000 word ebook, white paper, that beautifully explains the latest technology in static free clean rooms, right? Engineers ought to lap up everything I write. I show them pictures of the design and the construction and the operation of a static free clean room. They're going to respond. They're going to click on it. They're going to read it. Hopefully they're going to call. And they do. Why? More than half the people believe what they see. So what does that mean for the way we use our, our website? And it took me a long time being a writer and a news reporter and later an editor to figure out it's a lot more effective to show and not show. How is it effective? Nobody in here said that they run a cake, cupcake bakery. Anybody run a cupcake bakery? Okay. If you show on your WordPress website this image up in the hero space on the home page, somebody's going to stop and look at the kind of cupcakes you're offering. Or if you have close-ups of the way you decorate cupcakes, I guarantee you you're going to get more traction than if you just write about it. If you run a machine shop, you're a manufacturer, you're an auto mechanic shop, and you show how you make something, how your tools work, how you fix things, that's way more compelling than anything that I can write. If you're a DUI lawyer, just put your phone number in this photo on the top of your website, right? Everybody who's just been arrested for drunken driving is going to call you. So how do you do that visual presentation in WordPress? Well, um, how many folks are brand new to WordPress and sat in on the 101 stuff? Okay. 
So the next couple of points are really for your benefit. For those of you who are more experienced with WordPress, uh, bear with us. We're going to get to some other things that hopefully will uh, be new and beneficial to you. But inside the WordPress dashboard, you learned yesterday that there's a media library. And you can upload all kinds of image files, right? Photo files in JPEG, in graphics files, in uh, PNG format. You can upload PDFs, all kinds of, of visual uh, assets. If you upload them in there, you're going to have a directory that looks like this. And I'm going to show you how I use this photo, which is a really unattractive sleeping guy photo, to on behalf of an insurance agent. This is a local insurance agent selling health insurance. So we upload the photo. The next step, this is all for those of you who are new to WordPress, this is all onboard technology and, and core WordPress. You upload the photo, you have for each image file, you have this level of information. And this is where paying attention to the capability that WordPress offers us for publishing is critical to your success in getting the attention of customers and product. For each image, you want to have a file name. And we're going to talk about this file name in a second. This file name is ridiculously long. It's full of numbers and characters. It makes absolutely no sense. It's in there intentionally to show you something in a second. We also have something called alt text. And we have a description. And we also have, in this view, we have a link to the actual, in this case, blog post on this insurance agent site where this is displayed with the word. Why is any of this important? Why do you want to pay attention to after you've uploaded your image? Well, one, this file name can, 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 can convey information to Google about the topic and about the relevance of the photo. Google search can't see images. You can't see a picture when they're scanning sites. But what they can see is the text around it. So this file name really needs to be something that's in English, in simple words, like sick guy with flu. Yeah, you're going to see this guy in a second. Not those characters that are generated when the photo was created by the camera. So change that when you're uploading it, or change it here in the edit uh, data command. Change it to, in this case, sick guy with flu dot JPEG. Alt text. Anybody not know what alt text is? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if we go to edit more details, you're able to change it inside WordPress. Yeah. Alt text is alternative text. Really important for search. It won't be displayed, but Google can see it. And if you have put certain keywords in there, for example, flu, influenza, uh, health insurance. Okay, This one says photo of man with flu illness, health insurance from, and then the name of the insurance agency, Neely and Wade Insurance, Winchester and Lexington, Kentucky. That information is first and foremost important for Google. And Google will use that information along with the words in the blog post to determine how relevant your information is to this, what this, the searcher, the customer, has typed in. And I'm going to show you how that works in a second. Does that make sense on what alt text is? Many people don't use alt text. Um, this is critical to help Google find your information and put it in front of, of customers. So if we were live and I clicked on this link, that's actually the title of the blog article, which we're going to see next. Actually, we're not seeing that next. We're seeing Google's search results. So I typed in, get a flu shot, avoid winter illness, illness excuse me, and then Winchester, Kentucky. And I typed in Winchester, Kentucky because I was sitting in Cincinnati when I put this slide deck together. 
But if I were in Winchester, Google would already know that I was in Winchester, K Kentucky, and it would pull in as relevant information, information from websites that's near me, in this case in Winchester, Kentucky, or in Dayton, Ohio, or wherever you're sitting when the search occurs. What did it show me? Well, it showed me information about flu shot, illness, in Winchester, Kentucky, the location. What's the first thing? There's really bad photo of a guy who's not feeling really well, right? That's sitting on my client's website. Underneath it, what does it say? Get a flu shot to avoid winter illness. That's the title from the blog post that Google read. Google matched up the words in the title. Google also doesn't display it and say it, but Google also matched up the, the words that were in the alternate text, the alt text block. Um, depends on the, the terms of service or the license that the photo provider granted to you. Um, and that's really the point, um, is to, um, if you're obtaining images online and you're using those from a free site and those that are providing a, a, a common use license, you have to really be aware of the terms of use, okay? Uh, and some of them may very specifically say, that you can't change like the source of where this came from or they may say that you can't change the file name okay so you need to be aware of the term if you're if you're buying in that photo and a lot of the photos i use came from adobe stock which is a paid service um uh, i think it costs me like 32 dollars a month for almost unlimited access and their licensing is very liberal in terms of how i can reuse the images including changing who it's attributed to and, and where we publish it. So it really depends on the source of the photo. Now the other thing to notice here, and this photo on my client's website, the URL for the website is right here. It's number one in Google search rank. We have to pay for that just based on the way I publish the photo within WordPress. How does that translate then to what the viewer is going to see? They click on that photo. Guess what? It takes them to the insurance website. This is a blog post using the post publishing tools that are standard inside WordPress. Once you set it up, like you learned yesterday, you can set up a blog post like this. You can write to your heart's content. I'm a writer. I write to my heart's content. Publish, always publish with a photo. Why? People are more likely, two thirds of them are more likely to click on and open something, click on and follow the call to action button because of the image first. The image came up in Google search, not the word. It doesn't happen every time, but it happens probably eight or nine times out of 10 in Google search that the image will be displayed in Google search not the words and that's really important to know every blog post this also applies to things that you share on social platforms but having an image in a strong image will get your readers to click through more than just what what we write I see a hand back here in, in this case I suspect um, and Google doesn't say specifically what their criteria are and in what order, but I suspect because in that alt text field, I had typed in flu and illness and health insurance, and then my search, and yeah, I already knew the keywords, but you know, if somebody were searching for information or, uh, about flu or they were searching for information about health insurance, they're going to type in those specific words. No, 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 and we're going to get back to captions in a second, so hold that thought, okay? This is related um, in no small part to the alt text box.
Okay. It is located when you go to upload a photo. As the photo comes into the WordPress directory, there will be fields that you can fill out. There, are, I think they're on the right hand side of the window. You can. Uh, the question was, can you change the file name? You can change the file name at that point. You can add in a caption. We're going to talk about captions. Um, you can add in the alt text. You can also add in a description. Yes. So again, hold the question about caption, but it's the alt text that is important to help influence or try to influence Google search rank because that description won't be seen publicly, but Google will see it. So whatever your keywords are about your product or service, importantly your location, what city is your business in, what cities describe the footprint for your business. You know, how far out do you get in your car or truck to go take care of a customer? You know, listing that area, Dayton, Ohio, Winchester, Kentucky, okay? That helps Google figure out that, oh, this person selling health insurance in Winchester is close to the searcher, okay? If, if I hadn't typed in Winchester, Kentucky specifically, it would have given me search results for health insurance information in the Cincinnati area. Because that's where I was when I typed it in.